Well, hey folks, I'm in Scotland, right up in the northwest of Scotland, about to launch the boat in possibly the nuttiest slipway I've ever seen. <laughs> Just driven down through a wood, and this is Chef Mike Robinson's car, so I've got to try not to trash it. Our mission for this particular day was to track down some giant Scottish scallops, and if we had time, do some scouting for some big Scottish pollock. Yep, you're good. This is another adventure thanks to Chef Mike Robinson and his show Farming the Wild. So I'm very excited to bring you some of this behind the scenes action. What do you think lads? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of effort. Let's do this. Let's, get Let's going. do this. Let's do this. After launching the boat on what was a pretty dubious slipway, Oliver and William are so, so excited to dive for their first Scottish scallops. So we've come to this kind of sheltered bay. I have a feeling there's scallops. The boys have already say, seen one from the surface. There's a scallop right down here. <laughs> Can it's you reach mine. it? <laughs> I'm going to get it. I'm so excited for large Scottish scallops. So here we go. The water is absolutely crystal clear. You can make out the scallops easily from the surface. To help the boys get their iron, I dive down, point out a scallop and wait as they dive down to try and collect it. William's first scallop dive is a great success. Good dive. Wow. About eight meters that. Eight? Did he? Yeah. Holy shit. And it was <laughs> wide open. Was it? Well, I think it was. I felt it moving. Yeah, yeah, it was open. Yeah, yeah. Next, it's Oliver's turn to grab a scallop. This one's slightly deeper, but Oliver has quite a lot of experience scuba diving, so he's very good at equalizing his ears, and he comes down like a dolphin for this one. Thing, mate. <laughs> Good work, man. Just, I gotta get this thing figured out, but I filmed you. I filmed the whole thing. Nice. <laughs> we had our quota in no time at all. In Scotland, the regulations for recreational divers are six scallops per vessel. The minimum size is 10 centimeters across the shell, but we had absolutely no problem meeting this criteria, with one shell actually reaching 17 centimeters across, which we'll come back to later. With the scallops on board, we pushed further out to sea to a rocky island to see if we could find some pollock. The scenery up here is absolutely spectacular. And although the sun had gone behind the clouds, the seawater was glassy calm with absolutely no wind. We were so lucky with the conditions. I found the spearfishing here really interesting. The kelp seems to just stop at around about 15 meters. So everything was quite shallow and there were just hundreds and hundreds of small fish, very small pollock and coal fish. But we could see no sign of the bigger fish. Our time was running out as so we had to take scallops back to the chef, but I was very excited and there was some unfinished business here. We would have to come back here another day to see if we could find these bigger pollock or coal fish. Today we discovered a new scallop bed, a little honey hole with broken ground, some weeds, some sand, some rocks. But wherever you found the sand, the scallops were just absolutely vast. I'm just gonna do something. So that is right touching his nose, so that scallop is officially bigger than Joe Pike's face. <laughs> One of the massive perks of being on a cooking show is the incredible food. So we're making Tom Yum with mussels and scallops dived by the guides today. Yeah. Coconut and lime rice for dinner. And I'm poaching these massive scallops, look at those, in the Tom Yum broth, which has got leeks and onion and garlic and all sorts of gorgeous ones. There we are. Let's take that. So, after an amazing afternoon on the scallops, uh, Chef gave me the task to find some big Scottish pollock. His plan was to smoke them and then to put them in a big kind of 
broth. It actually took us a while to get on the Pollock. We ended up in some quite deep, rough conditions. This is a very good spot with the waves. They love it. Oh, was he on the bottom? Just right below us here. I just went with my throat and went. <laughs> so there I was explaining to Mike two quite important things about Pollock spearfishing. The first point being the water we were in was quite rough and there was a bit of current which the fish absolutely love. And secondly was that during the waiting I was doing on the bottom, I was making some noises with the back of the throat um, which caused vibrations in the water which really do work to bring these bigger pollock in. Again, there were spectacular numbers of small fish, but where were the big ones? These fish go so hard and 9 times out of 10 the bigger ones wedge themselves down in the kelp or under rocks, so the reel is absolutely essential if you're diving a bit deeper. Eventually though, he breaks loose and we're over the moon to have a beautiful golden Scottish pollock on board. Now of course I'm not showing the many empty dives just full of small fish, but patience and persistence usually does pay off and eventually I managed to catch one more fish that would be enough to feed everyone back at camp. on some really nice big pollock. Quite choppy conditions, quite uh, sort of deep water which came off a cliff. What's deep. the weight on those? I don't know, maybe three and a half kilos, two and a half kilos. Wow. So I'm really, really happy with them. These are gonna feed everyone now, back at the ranch, so great, great day. I hope you enjoyed this video despite the fact I didn't have much time to shoot my own content on this trip. If you did enjoy this, this video, you may enjoy this video about Scotland, which also involves some deer stalking as well as scalloping and pollock fishing. I'll also pin a comment of the video. And uh, other than that, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.